evening, bro. Praise the Lord. Am I loud and clear? Praise the Lord. Yes, brother. Loud and clear. Thank you very much. Just give me a moment. I'm just uh, going through my slides. Can we have the first slide ready? The last week that we did on the first teaching on suffering. Yes, brother. I have. Yeah. Yes. So can we just put it on? Uh, I'd like to start with the aspect of uh, redefining where we saw. Uh, so let me just give you a little review what we covered last time. Yes. Thank you very much. So, yeah, that's the slide I want. So understanding happiness. Last time we covered in our topic two reasons. We are dealing with this teaching, this teaching on suffering. And we are trying to get, uh, my goal is to give us a Catholic perspective, how the church helps us to understand this mysterious topic. That's why I've just said it, the topic is mystery of suffering. Today, a lot of things going on around, which, uh, you know, I will come to that, where we often think that, you know, this is something that uh, God doesn't want me in my life. So we need to get a very correct understanding of this topic. So last time I was, it was a little lesson in psychology. It's basically, we were trying to understand why suffering disturbs me so much, why I go through so much of pain and agony when I'm going through suffering. So <clears throat> we looked at two reasons, two reasons why suffering pains me why we go through an agonizing time where we are so disturbed, where we are not able to respond in a Christ-like manner. Like last time I ended up saying every suffering that we have in our life is an opportunity for us to respond in a Christ-like manner and also grow in Christ-like. And I, I gave you the temptation we all face. We, we want to be like Christ. We want to be like Jesus in his ministry doing mighty things for him, but we don't want to be like him. Like the apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter three, verse 10, I want to be like him in his death. That is in his suffering and his death. Paul says he wants to be like Christ in his suffering and his death so that he may experience the resurrection. But we are all, we have this unique temptation that all of us face, including myself, that we want to be like Christ in his ministry, doing mighty things for him. But sometimes the Lord wants us to go through mighty suffering. Okay. We, we, he just wants us to go through that. So the first reason why we uh, get troubled so much in our suffering, we saw last time is our concept of ideal life. What is ideal life? What I want life to be and what my life really is. This is one of the reasons why many of us rarely experience happiness in our life. Because, you know, we all have in our mind the concept what my job should be, what my boss should be, how my colleague should be, how my spouse should be, how my kids should be, how my life should be, ideal life. And what happens? It always clashes with the, the real life I have. There is a gap. Okay, the real life is this and the ideal life is this. Or in other words, the ideal life is here and the real life is here. And then I go through an intense suffering because life is not happening as I want it to happen. So that's the number one reason why we go through so much of agonizing pain. The second reason I gave is our understanding of happiness. Okay, how we understand. And in the, as I shared with you last time, last 40 years, the world has gone through a change and they are giving us an understanding of happiness. What is the world's understanding of happiness? Good feelings. You must feel good. And so suffering doesn't make you feel good. Okay, so then they say, you know, this is evil, this is bad, anything. And in fact, the problem with good feelings are, if you observe yourself, anytime you observe yourself, a lot of wrong things give good feelings. Why people struggle to give up porn? Why people struggle to give up an affair? They are experiencing good feelings in all those wrong things. They are feeling very good about it. In fact, they are on an emotional high. And that's why they get addicted to these kinds of things. And so how we understand happiness is also important. And 40 years ago, till 40 years ago, the meaning of happiness in the time of Jesus and all the philosophers like Socrates would often say happiness is all about living well. How you live. And so it is possible to live well in a time of suffering, but it is not possible to feel good in the time of suffering. So can I be happy in the time of suffering? My answer is yes and my answer is no. No, 
i'm saying no because if your understanding of happiness is feeling good then you won't be happy and yes you can be happy why i say yes because if your understanding is what the bible says and what the philosophers all this years till 40 years back were talking about that happiness is all about living well then you can surely be happy in any situation okay so that's these are the two reasons main reasons why many of us we don't ex- we go through a lot of agony in our time of suffering okay can we go to the next slide in fact i will like you to pass the next slide yeah go to the just pass this slide also and go to the next slide yeah now here i want to start today's teaching first of all uh, i want to talk about two kinds of suffering and two types of suffering okay there are two different things so i've taken this from uh, if you look at your screen pope john paul now saint john paul okay i would like to say saint john paul he wrote a document called i've written it on the screen there salvifici dolores this document is all on suffering most most of my teaching is taken from that document okay i was doing a study of that document some time back and wanted to say oh, what pope john paul now saint john paul has to say now if you have if you have observed the life of saint john paul he went and if you have watched a movie on his life it will show this man went through suffering right from his young age in world war 2 what all he went through and then also he was constantly battered with sickness you know the last few years of his life you know he had the he was suffering from parkinson you know he he was his memory was fading and so saint john paul was always uh, suffering was very close to his heart but we never found him complaining okay we never found him blaming he knew that was a part so in his apostolic letter he writes there he says suffering is almost inseparable from man's earthly existence what does what does he mean when he says that he says when you are born on earth one of the things you will face in your life is suffering and we will agree with that and then he says there are two kinds of suffering physical suffering is what we face in the form of sickness accident pain aches physical suffering and moral suffering moral suffering he talks about the pain you know the suffering of the heart where the heart suffers when someone hurts you uh, when someone betrays you okay or you lose someone you love and you go through a lot of agonizing pain it's called the suffering of the heart so there are two kinds of suffering can we go to the next slide let's have a closer look at these two kinds of suffering the physical suffering physical suffering as i said is the kind of suffering we are all familiar with it is when the body is in pain when the body goes through pain physical suffering then there is moral suffering as i said moral suffering is when the soul is hurting when the heart is hurting it might sometime moral suffering is a result of i am going through all that pain because of a betrayal or i may have lost a loved one or lost a job okay whatever triggers it moral suffering is all about i am suffering pain in my heart my inner you know i am full of pain i am going through pain in my heart and some of us are going through that even now the next slide let's have a look at two types of suffering now the pope goes on to talk about that there are two types of suffering just click to the next slide yeah the first is in addition to the physical and moral suffering St John Paul differentiates two other types of suffering. He talks about first is the temporal suffering. Now what does it mean? Temporal temporal suffering is a consequence of sin. Of course suffering is a consequence of sin. But it doesn't mean I have lived a life of sin. Our first parents when they sin suffering came into the world. So it's a consequence of sin. For instance illness, physical death. Okay? It is a suffering but it is temporary. Now often time this we must get it is temporary. you know some of us are so bothered so troubled because of the suffering and we think you know our brain there is when i was doing a little psychology on the brain there are some wrong messages our brain always gives us when we go through difficulty one is you know you and you will find yourself talking things like this it always happens with me always come on it doesn't happen always it has happened sometime always means when you get up in the morning it happens with you when you are brushing your teeth it happens with you always no it's not always it is sometimes but our brain will always say oh always it happens and the second wrong message your brain gives it it will it is forever 
forever it is happens it will it will never end so when we go through suffering these are the messages our brain tells us you know it is always we need to tell our mind it is temporal come on you know even if you uh, what what makes me say it is temporal now please hear this one day in my prayer time i i the holy spirit inspired me with this that victor it's temporal so temper uh, then i you know it came to maximum how long you will live on earth maximum 100 years after that you want to live eternity with the lord thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and never ending thousands of years compare that thousands and thousands of years to your life on earth it is just a, not even a dot so it is temporal even if it is 100 years you suffer your suffering it is temporal you see this is called eternal perspective that i'm going to talk today about that you when you compare you know most of us we don't compare our life to eternity okay we are looking that on earth life is everything on earth we talk about going to heaven but we live as if everything is on earth and so whenever we go through even 10 days one year oh i'm suffering so much such a long time you no know, you when you get an eternal perspective when you and i start looking at our lives from eternity point of view that i'm going to live the other side forever and ever and ever and compare to that forever if i compare my 80 years of life on earth 100 years of life on earth it's nothing it's like you know you were living for 80 years and you went you fell sick and you went 7 days in the hospital and you came back home Seven days. The seven days you you feel like you, sometimes you feel like it's forever. So temporal suffering. The second, we go to the next slide. The Pope goes on to say the second suffering is a definitive suffering. Now this is the suffering no one should suffer. No God doesn't want any soul to suffer this. What is definitive suffering? Where man perishes when he loses eternal life, which means after I die, I my I don't go to be with God. i am separated from god this is one suffering god doesn't want anyone to suffer it is the opposite of salvation okay therefore only temporal suffering or any kind of suffering god will allow us to go but he doesn't want us to go through definitive suffering the loss of eternal life now jesus died on the cross to save us from definitive suffering and i'll come to that what about my earthly i'm coming to that but first let's get to it because you know we sometimes we talk as if oh the lord has died and he has suffered so i don't need to suffer yes you don't need to suffer what kind of suffering you and i don't need to suffer definitive suffering because of jesus is death on the cross through his death jesus took the punishment of definitive suffering upon himself of course he has taken a sickness and illness also i'm coming to that what about that yes he has taken that also but the lord specifically died to save us from definitive suffering so i have said it's very clear in our mind okay so next slide in the next slide let's understand the suffering of christ now okay let's understand now there is a verse i would like you to look at your screen and there is a verse paul writes in colossians chapter 1 actually is verse 14 by mistake i've written verse 4 okay it's verse 14 it says now i rejoice in my suffering now look at you know in the new testament you will find whenever the writers are writing on suffering they are talking about rejoicing you read romans chapter can you click the slide i've given you some scripture verses that talks about rejoicing If you read James chapter one verse two, it says, "Consider it joy, my brothers, when you go through all kinds of trial." Romans chapter five verse three says, "We rejoice in suffering." One Peter chapter four verse thirteen says, "Peter writes, our first pope writes, in this you rejoice." You see, the New Testament is very clear. What kind of attitude we must have? It's not that they are not saying dance and be happy. No, please don't do that. Huh? If you do that. if you are suffering and you do that there is something wrong with the wiring of your brain something is seriously wrong with your brain but don't be hopeless okay don't keep on complaining that is what the new testament writers were very clear rejoice 
You see, this is what I call when we are converted, this is one of the conversions that should happen in our life. The conversion, my attitude towards suffering needs also to be converted, which has not happened. And when being so many years in the renewal, it doesn't happen. My attitude towards suffering. It's the New Testament says rejoice. Now there is a verse in verse 14, and I would like to say that, you know, here Paul writes, now I rejoice in my suffering for your sake. Now, Jesus also died for their sake. And Paul says, I'm suffering also for whom? For your sake. Ah, come on. You know, how come Paul is suffering for the Colossians' sake? He had a thorn in the flesh, but he's saying that is for your sake. Which means Paul, now please listen to this. Paul was offering his suffering for the sake of the church. He was offering it up. That's what the very Catholic famous words we have. Offer it up. Okay, it was not that because he was preaching to the Colossians that he was getting, you know, suffering and the Colossians were beating him. No, it was not that. See, I am suffering for your sake and my flesh, now this is what he says, I complete what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of the body. Now, what is Paul saying? In my flesh, I complete what is lacking in Christ's, Christ's afflictions, Christ's suffering. Is there anything lacking? Jesus died and didn't he pay 100% price? Didn't the Lord pay 100% price? Was there anything lacking? What does Paul mean? And he says, he says, I am completing what is lacking. There is something lacking in the suffering of Christ, Paul says. So now the question is, uh, didn't Jesus pay the price 100% and I want to answer that. It's something very important we need to understand. Can we go to the next slide? And so in the next slide, we have the explanation. St. John Paul, yeah, in his, once again in that document, he explains that word. Salvifici dollaris. Look at your screen. Para 27. He explains that. He says, the springs of divine power gush forth in the midst of human weakness. Those who share in the sufferings of Christ. Now that's what Paul was talking. I'm sharing in the suffering of Christ. So those who share in the sufferings of Christ preserve in their own suffering a very small particle. So our suffering is in the suffering of Christ. When we compare our suffering with Christ, our suffering is a very small particle of infinite treasure. Now that word is very important. There is an infinite treasure in that small suffering I am going through. Many of us, we see thread. suffering is a problem. What you are talking about? Treasure. What is the treasure in my suffering? And that's what many of us have not realized. We see that something is bad, something that needs to get over. But the Pope writes, there is an infinite treasure, which means you are suffering even right now, whatever you are going through. There is some treasure in that suffering. Okay, what is that treasure of the world's redemption? Which means your suffering can be redemptive. What is the treasure in that suffering? If you offer up, now that's what Paul says, I suffered for your sake. Paul is offering up his suffering for the Colossians' sake. And so when, when I understand the treasure in my suffering and when I go to offer it up, when I offer up my suffering, that suffering God can use because Jesus is suffering, redeem the world. And now as a body of Christ, I'm offering up my suffering, which God will use to redeem a soul. World's redemption and can share it with others. Okay. So look at your screen again. Christ gives us room in his suffering. Now we want room in the ministry of Christ. Huh? All of us want. That's the big temptation. I want to be like Christ in his ministry. Do signs and wonders for him. We want room in Christ's ministry, but very rarely we want room in the suffering of Christ. And to share in his suffering, Philippians chapter 1, verse 29 tells us this. What is written in Philippians 1, 29? This is one verse you should know by heart. You, I know you know, ask and you will receive. If you, don't, if you ask anything in my name, you know all those verses, isn't it? This is also one verse you must know by heart. As I said, the gospel comes with privileges, it comes with uh, cost, and it comes with responsibilities. 
and this is one of the cost of the gospel let's look at this philippians 121 says for it has been granted to you that for christ sake two things are granted to us god is granting to us two things not only to believe him two privileges are given the first privilege is to believe in jesus and second but also to suffer for his sake how many of us know this words by heart that suffering is a privilege god grants us in christ that he gives us an opportunity to suffer with him to suffer for his sake this is one verse you must know by heart and someone comes and tells me no god suffering is not god's plan god doesn't want it. i says no matter what you say you will have a troublesome son you will yet go through you will have conflict with your wife don't act as if you are living in heaven huh? come on you are living on earth and you are living with sinners who are in the process of conversion your job will be stressful what about that suffering uh, raising up kids is really a, sometimes it's a headache and a heartache and do you know do, fulfilling all your responsibilities is another kind of suffering sometimes what are you talking about you know that you won't have any suffering you're talking about that heaven you will have on earth no heaven is in heaven in this world jesus said you will have trials and tribulations john chapter 16 verse 32 and 33 what about that verse and so we have, we have been brainwashed in the wrong way you must know this verse by heart that it's been granted to us to suffer for his sake next slide now there are two ways we can look at christ suffering two ways and i want you to give your topmost attention now please give your topmost attention because i'm going to attack even one of the belief that is going on in the charismatic renewal which i don't agree in fact i have argued with some of the speakers also who have this whole formula of name it claim it okay which means if you are just naming it and claiming it if god has promised to give you please name it now the first notion is look at the screen the first notion is what we sometimes also believe in the charismatic renewal jesus did it all when jesus died on the cross he suffered he paid the price for my sin he died and he suffered for me and he paid the price so since jesus suffered and paid my the price can we go to the next point i am a recipient of that blessing his benefits i am a recipient of his blessing i can confess what i want <laughs> isn't it goes on our group and that's why i said i have arguments with some preachers here and whenever anyone sends to me i confess this is gone so and what do you confess come on confess you are going to heaven no heaven what ben see look at i confess i want homes in jesus name i'll get a 4 bhk cars healings perfect health i am the recipient of all that feed me ha ah, feed me but it's not in the bible <laughs> that's the truth please show me where god has promised he has promised to meet all your needs now, come on all these things can be your greeds and so i be, i believe god has promised to meet our needs if we seek his kingdom first he will meet our needs not our greeds and sometimes these things is like greed and you will have to speak as you know in the name of jesus put anything you know what does it mean to pray in the name of jesus we are when i was doing a bible college we had a big discussion on this what does it mean when you say in jesus name i pray one of the meaning is please listen to this carefully one of the meaning is the professor who was teaching us said when you pray in jesus name you are saying i pray as jesus would have prayed in my place i am asking as if jesus would have asked me that's what the name means the name recognizes the person how this person would have prayed in my place and what did jesus pray in the garden of gethsemane let not my will but yours be done and that's why it's very important to ask and we are taking that name and we are treating as a magical name i remember when i had that slip disc and how desperate also you know there were a few brothers who called me up and prayed over me and i also Well, you know, when they prayed, I had that kind of faith, and then they told me, "Brother Victor, you must get up and walk in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk." And I decided to get up, and I fell down. And they said, "No, you must try to get up. Come on, brother, in faith, get up." Ultimately, I got fed up. 
because I couldn't get up and then they never understood that I couldn't get up. And they said, no, you must try to get up. You must try to get up. Until my mentor told me, just tell them, thank you. Okay. Thank you for praying because the Lord wants you to suffer with your wife. You decided to take care of her inner suffering, but the Lord is wanting you to suffer with her. This is the first time in your marriage you are suffering with her. So please quietly suffer with her. Mystery it is. You don't try to understand that. Just go through it and ask the Lord to use it for your growth in holiness. What I am talking here is never written in the Bible. The Bible talks about meeting our needs, not our greeds. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13, rejoice in so far you share in Christ's suffering. It tells us to rejoice. You are sharing in Christ's suffering. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 and 23. For this you have been called. Ah, I have been called to serve, do mighty wonders in the Lord's name. But have you seen for this you have been called? What is this? What is that this that I have been called? Next, uh, can, I, can we go to the next slide? For, for this we have been called. If, uh, sorry, come to the previous slide. For this we have been called. And if you see the other part of the words, I couldn't put it there. The context is suffering. You are called to suffer for his sake. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19, those who suffer, those who suffer. So, you know, where in the world you are talking about, who is talking about and promoting this, that this suffering is not a part of God's plan. Now, as I said, as I said, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not promoting here that accept every suffering that comes. In my last talk, I said, whenever you have a problem, when you are, you are sick, First, please pray for your healing. Pray for your deliverance. My question is when that healing doesn't come, when that deliverance doesn't come, then what? Ah, that's where this teaching comes. Then don't change brothers. You know, there are some people who keep changing, but this brother prayed over me. I never got, I'll call another brother. And we go through the brother syndrome. Running from one brother to another brother. I come to the elder brother. The elder brother said, I suffered. Now it's your time also to suffer. Okay. We go to the next slide. So our sufferings. Okay. What the Catholic Church teaches. What Peter and Paul taught. Yes, Christ suffered for the sins of the world. Christ suffered for the sins of the world. This is what Paul and Peter taught. But the relationship. Now please listen to this. The relationship of Christ with the church is so close. Jesus is so close with the church. He wants to share everything. And there are two specific things Jesus shares with the church. His mission and his suffering. He continues to share that. Philippians 1.29. Okay. So that's what when he went away, he told the disciples, you got to go out in my name, his mission. And then he said, if you want to follow me, take up your cross. He wants us to share in his mission and in his suffering. Let's go to the next slide. So our sufferings and crosses have meaning now. Ah, that, that's what I want you to say. You know, the day you find meaning in your suffering, if they are joined to the sufferings, to his sufferings, if they are, we get an opportunity to join my suffering, that suffering. You know, when I was uh, on bed, not getting well, the founder of the charismatic renewal in India, the I will not say the founder, but uh, the person who started the first prayer meeting, she was also the chairperson uh, somewhere in 2004 to 2007 when I was in the Bombay service team. When I was in the service team, she was the chairperson. I had the privilege to work with her for three years. So they were the first prayer group members who started the first prayer meeting. Many people think prayer a charismatic renewal started in Porta. No, charismatic renewal started in Mumbai. Even before it came to Dubai, it started or anywhere it started in Mumbai and in Mumbai it started in a place called Bandra where we had our 50 years celebration and this was the people who were first part and she was talking to me about you know she had called me to discuss about something and then I told her I'm sick then she said oh that's so nice you know someone telling me that's so nice <laughs> can you offer it up for our program don't waste it offer it up and I said you know even the the person who was first part of the CCR, the first member knows what suffering is all about. And here we have some brothers, name it, claim it, I confess it. Next time I want to tell you, anytime you have to send it, I confess it, don't send it to me. 
or i will have a google meet with you and have a discussion with you okay confess spiritual blessings don't write about i confess cars and homes confess you are a child of god confess you have authority in his name confess what god has told in the scriptures don't fill in the blanks there i confess car i confess promotion i confess you know on the facebook money is coming in my bank don't confess all that using god's promises only for material things god has promised to meet our needs but not our greeds okay so it has when we offer up our suffering they become redemptive and powerful see look at the screen they become redemptive and powerful and it has tremendous redemptive power okay now we go to slide 2 can you just put the slide 2 now a very important question i want to ask you please think about this as i go in the other part of the teaching jesus died on the cross for my sin and my suffering true now please listen to this since jesus suffered for me has he redeemed me he has redeemed me and we must sing i am redeemed i am redeemed by the blood of the lamb but now please listen to this has he redeemed me from suffering that i will have no suffering what does it mean to be redeemed from suffering i will have no suffering has he redeemed me from suffering or has he redeemed my suffering now that's what you must understand what is christ redeemed me has he redeemed me from which means i won't have any suffering now if you look at your life it's not true observe your life even now you are going through something so has he redeemed me from suffering no has he redeemed my suffering yes he has redeemed my suffering which means my suffering can now be used it is redemptive it has redemptive value it has redemptive power jesus has redeemed every suffering of mine that means my suffering can't be wasted and sadly our sufferings are wasted i am going to teach you how not to waste your suffering not to waste it don't waste it you are already going through it why waste it and as i said 70% of our life is suffering we are you know if you look at your life right now have do you have the ideal life no as i said like in my last talk we are putting up i am just putting up with so many things in my life putting up with my spouse putting up with my kids putting up with my boss putting up with my job actually i don't want i want a break give me a break please i'm just putting up 70% of our life is all putting up once a while you will have an accident once a while you will have a life threatening sickness that is once a while but daily we are suffering going to the office is also suffering traffic and someone cuts you and gives you talks to you in tongues and now you are going to for your responsibility and so you are already hurt me if you observe your life 70% of the time we are suffering and the worst part is we are wasting it even that has redemptive value jesus has redeemed my suffering he has not redeemed me from suffering i hope so this is very very clear to all of us now let's go to the next slide now what i want to cover here yeah just click as we have looked at types of suffering once again now types of suffering what i want to cover here is what i do i mean uh, actually the name type is wrong here let's look at the various reasons there are three top reasons i want to give you why we go through suffering three top reasons why we suffer the first suffering is called or types of suffering you know the pope writes this is what the pope is writing in this document punitive suffering now what is punitive suffering look at the screen suffering was the result of sin saint john paul writes in the sufferings god inflicted upon god's chosen god's chosen people you would find the people of israel in the old testament suffering okay now look at that what i have written there in the dark this suffering corrects us in order to lead us into to conversion which means this punitive suffering is a result because i have done some wrong i have done some wrong and i am suffering for that now let me give you example of punitive suffering you know david after he committed adultery with bathsheba god forgave him now this is something i want you to hear huh? 
many of us you know we play a game with god we repent after we have done a big sin and why we are repenting not because we are sorry for the sin actually i don't want to go through the suffering that the sin is going to bring in my life i want to avoid the suffering that the sin is going to bring in my life now after committing adultery my wife may hate me my children may not respect me that is the suffering now and this that suffering is the result of my sin now god may forgive my sin and he will forgive my sin no matter how big is but does he take the consequences away no i have to go through the consequences david if you read david's life after he committed his sin with bathsheba for the next 12 years of his life he suffered nathan tells him when nathan is correcting him the sword shall not depart from your house now which means this is the consequence now of your sin you have you have started the cycle of consequences of your sin and that's what happened in david's family if you look at his family life and then his children turn against him that's the worst thing for a parent where your own son is trying to kill you he's not fighting for your property he's trying to he's giving supari to kill you and now david is next 12 years is going through the consequences that is called punitive suffering the next time you know you have done some wrong you have gone late to the office and the boss fires you don't say oh i'm suffering for the lord <laughs> come on you deserve that okay that suffering is a consequence of your sin uh, you know you you suddenly you know you have been unfaithful to your spouse and you are caught and then you go to the priest for confession and now say and then you come and say you know i have confessed my sin now the god accepts me so you must also accept me god has accepted you whether your wife and whether your husband and whether your kids will accept you that's a different story now but we expect now you should trust me hey come on you know come on relax they should put a carpet for you i say this to the people your wife should put a carpet for you now if you have truly repented if you have truly repented you will accept the consequences and many of us don't want consequence brother i have repented now she should trust me now she should accept me hello what are you talking about can you go i know if you commit a murder and come and to a priest for confession and tell the priest i'm sorry i did that will the god forgive you yes will the court forgive you can you go and tell in the court i just went for confession and god forgive me who are you judge to hang me there is consequences for our sin that's why we must be careful when we are sinning though god will forgive us of our sin but he will not take the consequences away and we play a game with god a dirty game with god sometimes we are repenting so that we will not have consequences hello don't play games with god if you have truly repented if you have truly repented then you will accept that consequences how many husbands have told now if you have truly repented you know what your wife is going to torture you when you go back after this retreat from home and you will go through that you will accept that if you have truly repented you will accept that otherwise you are still proud you know i came for confession and now no 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 sorry and if you have truly repented you will accept all that and don't worry god is with you when god forgives you he will use that suffering you will use that suffering and how god will use that suffering let's have a look at how god uses when i have suffered for my sin and you know the wrong that i have done will god use that suffering yes how the next slide can we go to the next slide so in the next slide it says when one suffers as a result and that suffering is called punishment huh? that is what is called punishment you have sinned and you are getting punished the attitude should not be one of enduring that i am enduring i am going through it you know i repented also i said sorry also and yet they are troubling me don't cry hello don't cry okay this is what should happen look in the dark look at what i have written in the dark that's what should you should focus on not crying you know they are treating me like this treating me like that you have to go through that the one who suffers must focus on rebuilding the goodness lost due to sin now focus on being faithful to your wife because the temptations are still there now focus on rebuilding that goodness you cheated someone now focus on not cheating anyone and focus focus on rebuilding that goodness that was lost because of that sin god will use that suffering to build that goodness that was lost because of sin not that he will you know see that your children and your spouse don't trouble you they that will go on perhaps how long god knows how long 
Next slide. Okay. Then there is a probative suffering. Pope John Paul talks about probative suffering. Suffering when we are tested. Okay. The probative suffering is the suffering when you are tested. The, the prime example is Job. I was talking to a group of leaders. I was giving recollection yesterday and I was saying, you know, what, what a life of leaders should be, especially when we are going through suffering. And I said, you are really, a, I was describing a strong leader. I said, you want to know you are a strong leader? This is one point from the book of Job. When you lose everything, Job, when he lost everything, it says he knelt down and he worshipped God. He worshipped God after losing everything. How many of us, when we lose one thing, we say we come for the prayer meeting, God, I'm finding it difficult to praise you. I'm finding it difficult to worship you. Because this problem, this suffering is going on in my life. Until you don't take it away, I won't be free to praise you and worship you. It says Job, when he lost everything, he went that evening for the prayer meeting, he knelt down and he worshipped the Lord. I says, we know we are strong when you can worship the Lord even in the midst of your pain and suffering. Because worship doesn't depend upon feelings. It is the act of faith. Now, why Job was able to worship God even when he lost everything? Please listen to me. Because though Job, Job lost everything, yet he lost nothing. I repeat again, because though Job, Job lost everything, yet he lost nothing. Why? God was his everything. God was everything for him. I know we sing that song, you are my everything. I do not know. You know, I was cracking a lot of jokes yesterday with the leader of first offline meeting. And some of the jokes I was cracking was this. We tell God, you are my everything, you are my all. And here one mobile phone goes and we get mad. One pillow goes wrong, one sadi, you know, one tear happens by mistake, one killa, one nail happens and that sadi tear, ah, heart is out. And what you are talking about, you are my everything. I, do we mean what we say? Another joke, or just sidetrack, another joke. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. And just happen, God says, I hey, want to be where you are right now. Next hour, you will be in heaven. Hey, God, don't take that seriously. I never meant I want to be where you are. <laughs> okay, I want to be here on earth in your presence. Come on, then say, Lord, condition apply. I just want to be where you are. Condition apply right now, Lord, on earth. I don't want to come really. I don't take it seriously, Lord. Don't want to come where you are. You see so many songs we don't mean what we sing. And if God happened to take the song seriously, I was sharing about their, my own life. You know, I had gone in 2014, I had gone to Goa when St. Francis' body, uh, I think so it was 2014 or 15 when his body was exposed and we were getting the opportunity. I stood in the line five hours to reach his body and after reaching there, there was an incident that happened where my mobile phone got lost. And I got so angry on Francis, sorry, calling him Francis, St. Francis, David, I meant. I said, I came to meet you five hours and immediately after meeting you, you know, and what had happened when I met Francis, when I saw his body, I had only one minute to stand there and pray. And you know what I prayed to the point? Let me have the virtues you had. And you know what virtues St. Francis Xavier had? Detachment. He was detached from everything. And as soon as I prayed for that, I came out and my mobile got lost. And I fought that night with Francis. What all I told him? Of course, next morning I went for confession. I told confess it to God in the, in the confession in the, to the priest and I also went to St. Francis Xavier Church and I cried. I cried for one hour and I confessed and told Francis also sorry. But then I realized and then you know it came to my mind like as if Brother Fra, St. Francis is saying to me, last evening you told me you wanted the grace of detachment. So I answered your prayer immediately when you went out your mobile got lost. And I realized you know how attached we are. We need probative suffering. Testing. Time of testing. Next slide. I want to go a little quicker because there is quite a few things to cover. Then there is disciplinary suffering. Now there is a difference between punishment and discipline. Punishment means you have done wrong. Discipline means you are not doing something fully. You are not fully committed. You are not fully dedicated. Like, you know, parents are seeing their children are studying, but they are not studying fully. So what do you do? You discipline them. He says, you know, no playing football till you don't complete your lesson. 
and so we will find that god also inflicts discipline upon us because he wants us to grow he knows what you can become you know he can be he knows you can become this and you are this and he needs to discipline you so suffering also comes to discipline you next slide okay the psalmist said look at the scripture the psalmist said when he slew them they sought him they repented and sought him earnestly they remembered that god was their rock the most high their redeemer so suffering comes for your discipline next slide yeah next slide the discipline comes from the heart but when we say when god is disciplining you he is a good father hebrews chapter 12 talks about that okay god disciplines you because he loves you as a son in the next slide we will see that okay so don't say god is you know angry with you and he is upset with you let's go to the next slide god disciplines you because he is treating you as sons that's what hebrews chapter 12 verses 4 to 11 says so disciplinary suffering now we come to the last part and i want to go a little faster quickly quickly can we go to the next slide what do i need to do when i suffer this is a very important part now we have seen what i okay what so what do i do when i suffer the first thing we need to do is entrust yourself to god and i have written a prayer there you know this is one of the prayer i prayed i prayed often i prayed often this prayer when i was going through my slip disk and two months i was on my bed i couldn't get up what was that prayer jesus i am choosing is a it's a prayer of the will huh? not feeling it's a prayer of your will jesus i am choosing to entrust myself to you in this battle i am like you know when jesus stood into your hands i commend my spirit he told the father so i am doing what the lord did i choose to entrust you in the midst of this battle this suffering i refuse to blame others or run away i am not going to run away from my suffering lord i refuse to blame anyone for my suffering or self medicate self medicate means i am drinking i am taking drugs to drown myself you know that pain i am not going to self medicate or become bitter you know why god bitter against god bitter against people why it's happening with me when i am so good so lord i am not going to do that instead i will entrust myself to you i will allow you to work in me however you want please bring about the results you desire This is the prayer we must pray. Next slide. So first is entrust yourself to God. Second, unite your will with the will of Christ. What do I mean? In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus did that. He told the Father, "What was His will? Uh, if possible, take this cup away." And you must always pray that. Paul also prayed, "Take the thorn away." God, take the thorn away. So first pray, God, you know, please take, please heal me, Lord. You know, please take this problem away. Please change my boss. Please change my spouse. you know i'm going through unbearable pain first pray that but then don't forget the next line not my will but your will be done now tell me what is wrong in that some people say you must never pray that are but i am praying for god's will to be done what can be greater than god's will he says god's will you say na then you will suffer only you must name it and claim it so unite your will with the will of christ through prayer don't keep think it in your mind pray lord i don't want this but not what i will thy will be done next slide okay we have jesus praying in the garden of gethsemane as i said okay next slide third now third realize we need to realize that jesus will not allow you to go through any suffering that you can't handle 1 Corinthians 10 13 says God will not allow us to go through any temptation that you can't handle which means now please listen to me many of us say I can't take this I can't take this hello God won't give you anything that you can't take now the problem is you don't know how much you can take let me give an example I do gymming, and I remember I used to always get scared to do squats for hundred kg. <laughs> that number hundred, you know, I says I will never try hundred, and I never did that. And one day the trainer told me, "Sir, I have hundred to kill today. You have to do hundred." And I immediately said, "No, no, no, sir, it will not happen." I said, "Sir, you don't know what you can do. You don't know what all you can do. I know what you can do. Now see what he said." you don't know how much you can really carry i know how much you can carry 
I had a choice. Either I can trust myself. No, I can't carry that. You know, hundred. No, sorry. No, I can't take it. Or I could believe him. He knows exactly how much I can take it. I decided to believe him, and by God's grace, within a next another one year, I reach hundred and sixty. I could do squats of hundred and sixty. That was a record for me at my age. Sometimes we don't know how much we can carry. God knows exactly, and God will not give us anything more than that we can carry. Which means today, what I am going through, today what I am facing, I can actually carry it. But the thing is, I am so addicted to comfort that little pain also, I start crying. Okay, so realize that Jesus will not allow you to go through suffering you can't handle. The next slide. Yeah, God's grace is sufficient. He will always give you no suffering. He will always give you sufficient grace, which means which means he says, by my grace you will be able to handle it. The next slide. Next thing to do in during suffering, please go for confession. Make a good confession. Now many of us we try to do a good confession so that we'll get healed. <laughs> See the games we play with God. Ah, no wonder if God was going to heal you, praise God for that. But we need to go for confession during suffering, so that please listen, so that my spiritual strength increases. Sin eats away my spiritual strength, and so I want my spiritual power to increase, my spiritual strength to increase, so that I grow in holiness in this suffering, so that I become more like Christ in the suffering, and that's the one reason I should go for confession. Go for confession. Next, next slide. Participate on the altar. Now, please give me your topmost attention for this point. During mass, you know, during mass there is a offertory time, and after the priest, we sing that song in bread. We bring you, Lord. Okay, and the priest is offering. Have you seen after the offering? What does the priest pray? Now, please listen to the prayer. The priest prays. The priest prays. Pray, brethren, that your sacrifice and mine. Hello, priest. But you are offering only your sacrifice there. What are you saying? Your sacrifice, which means my sacrifice. My sacrifice is what? The priest is praying, pray, brethren, that your sacrifice, which means first is mine. I have to offer something on the altar, and he says, pray, brethren, that your sacrifice and mine. Please pay attention to that prayer. May be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Now the priest is offering the bread and wine. What must I offer? Ah, that is where we are wasting our suffering. Please offer it up on the altar at that time. You and I are supposed to offer up all our suffering, even the stress that you go for for doing a job, the stress that you are going to bring, raise up your kids, the trouble that you are going with that particular child. To bring up that child, and you know, be responsible parent with that child. Offer it all up. Next time after the offering, please pay attention to that word. Okay, offer it up during the mass. Next sixth, take a vocation, not a vacation. <laughs> Many of us, when we go through suffering, I just want to go for a holiday. I'm just waiting to go for a holiday. You don't. What is the vocation? Our main vocation is to love. Now you know when you suffer, we become so bitter, we become karelas. You know that's the time consciously we can make an attempt. Anyone who comes to see me, I'm going to love that person. What we do? We cry. We start complaining. We start telling them how much is our suffering and how much is our problem and what all we are going through and why God did this, why God did that. Rather than expressing our love for the person, you can grow in love. No other way. Deeper, your love is becoming mature when you love while you are suffering. That's our vocation. Our vocation number one is to love. So take a vocation, not a vacation. Next and the last point: keep an eternal perspective. As I said, please don't get lost. Oh, forever I'm going to suffer. This is always going to happen in my life. It is never going to get over. Next time you are tempted, please compare your life on earth to life in heaven. Life in heaven, 
forever, ever, 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 never ending thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Compare to those thousands of years, compare your hundred years. Only a hundred years you are going to suffer. But no, it's long. No, it's not long. <laughs> Just not even a dot. Have an eternal perspective. Many of us, we have an earthly perspective. As we say, everything is on earth. We have that God bless you. You will be a miserable person. As I conclude, I hope this teaching has helped you not to waste your suffering but to use it. So let me end. First of all, it is important to realize that suffering is temporal. No suffering is permanent. Okay? When we enter, when we go to heaven, all our suffering will end. Forever! Retirement! Amen! <laughs> Retirement, no sickness, no pain. No one will hurt me and I will hurt no one. I'm waiting for that. I don't know every morning I get up, I'm one more day close to my retirement. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you all. Who do you, bro? Thank you, bro. God bless you. Your brothers and sisters, anyone have any questions for Brother Victor? Kindly unmute yourselves. Any questions? Okay, I think all, <laughs> Maybe all the questions are answered. Yeah, praise God for that. Thank you, Brother.